Collective, what is going on? Welcome to the channel. I'm Deborah. This is Proush Intuitive, and we're going to be looking at the energy for the next week. We'll look at some of the astrology, pull a few cards, all that fun stuff. <laughs> um, we'll start off with an energy cleansing just to set the vibe, set the tone, clean out any blocks, obstacles that we might be running into. This is a great time to set intention as well, especially if you have questions you would like answered around anything that you're moving through. These are collective readings, right? So use your discernment as always. Take what fits, leave the rest behind. And yeah, we'll get into it. So we have a full moon this week in Sagittarius on Thursday. As a heads up, I will upload a specific video on that, um, but we'll talk about it a little bit. Pluto is also in retrograde right now, and it basically is challenging us to make changes. <laughs> Not in the most comfortable way. We've all been feeling it for sure. It's been a heavy energy. It's kind of like the last push before it goes directly into Aquarius. So I'm looking at this as an opportunity to really strengthen our own empowerment, hearing ourselves, getting in tune, in touch with ourselves so that we can make decisions that really honor our heart, our mind, our soul, as well as what our goals are happiness, fulfillment, enjoying this life that we live. It's so important. And a lot of times we make choices out of fear, out of ego. And this really helps us to learn more of who we are and make choices accordingly, make decisions honoring ourselves, right? Okay, let's get into it. I bless you with pure love and light, pure source energy, pure love and grace. I release anything that is blocking the highest and best messages from coming through, fear, doubt, anxiety, frustration, anger, lack of worth, lack of value. Help to make me a clear and open channel for the collective. Thank you, Father God, Spirit Guides, Guardian Angels, Mama Love. Thank you. Amen. All right, let's get into it. So what I like first and foremost of how the astrology is looking for us this week is we are getting a lot more support. It doesn't necessarily mean that we won't... Um, you know, run into things that are frustrating or challenge us. But that energy is way less than what it has been. Even in this past week, we had like a lot of tug of war type energy. Um, push and pull between the old, between what is easier. People were trying to walk away from versus stepping into the new and really empowering ourselves. But that energy is definitely starting to give way. So it's softening and we're having more support as we are leading up to the full moon. It makes it easier to make those choices and those decisions that are more heart honoring like I was talking about in the very beginning. So beginning of the week, okay, debilitated. <laughs> I feel like this is really talking about how uh, it's it's discomfort in this deck. So I feel like it is really, we're needing to look at those things that are not so comfortable. Having a new perspective around how we are handling people, situations, etc. This is that value of like knowing that we want things to change, but then actually doing the work around it. And it is going to be a little bit uncomfortable. But at the bottom of the deck, what I just saw, Nine of Cups, it's leading to our wish fulfillment. It is leading us to things that make us happy, that make us more empowered. Jupiter right now is sextile, so harmoniously aspected. 
to Neptune. Neptune is that intuitive energy and Jupiter is our abundance. It is how we bring in our wealth, our success, our evolution and growth. Yeah, so new beginnings, creative endeavors are on the horizon. You feel inspired walking into the week. I feel like you see your vision, you know what you want, you know what you're going after, but at the same time, Spirit is really asking us to look at the places that are not very comfortable. Um, maybe we have to be honest with ourselves, find some awareness around where we are struggling, where we keep hitting those brick walls, so to speak, and make changes accordingly. Because I feel like this vision that you have in front of you is really beautiful. It's incredibly powerful. But there's this part of you, the five of coins, that's struggling a little bit. It goes back to that discomfort that we were talking about when we're making changes sometimes. And especially like dealing with people, relationships, etc., you know, it's easy to feel left out. It's easy to feel like we're getting cast aside, like we're lonely or being rejected. When in actuality, it's just about making the changes. We're getting two fives. And in numerology, fives are all about that change. It's a mid-cycle change. So wherever you've been, you know, previous to this, things are going to start turning in a new direction, but it is requiring your awareness. It's requiring you to not feel so down and out about the things that you're leaving behind or that you know need to be changed. Um, I'm hearing like shedding the guilt, shedding the shame, bringing clarity, bringing awareness so that you can tap into that abundance. Venus is harmoniously aspected to Black Moon Lilith. So I feel like we're tapping into, I'm hearing this as twofold, we're tapping into a deeper level of passion and excitement for what we do. Um, Black Moon Lilith can be a little bit tricky at times, and she is in opposition to the vertex point in the beginning of the week. So be aware, be mindful of a little bit of the trickery, right? The things that we can get sucked back into. And I feel like this is attached to that discomfort that we were talking about. Um, not letting old patterns, old behaviors, old ways of thinking, or again, even people or situations you're trying to release, infiltrate what you're doing. Knight of Swords energy, taking action, moving forward in a strong and empowered way, and not being afraid to claim that power. Yes, there is still growth that needs to happen. There is still, um, you know, changes that need to be made. As we see things in a new perspective, it's really going to help us feel more empowered, feel that passion that I was talking about with that Venus energy. She's really going to help move us forward to the next level. And with Black Moon Lilith, you know, I like her. She's a little wild, right? She taps into her wild side, which is always so fun. But we always have to make sure we don't go overboard one way or the other. So being free, being open to receive, putting yourself in new places, new experiences at the beginning of the week, and not being afraid of that. Um, not letting it uh, scare you, right? Scare you away. Because I feel there's this huge energy around us right now that's really asking us to cut off things from the past. And that's one thing that Black Moon Lilith can be a little bit tricky about because sometimes she brings illusion, making things seem one way when in fact they're not. Neptune is also in Pisces, so it really heightens that intuitive energy, that awareness which can be a blessing and a curse. Sometimes, um, you know, Neptune and Pisces brings out a lot of fear, a lot of illusions. It can make us think something is happening when it's really not. And interestingly enough, we get Neptune for the middle of the week. It's I love it too in this deck. It's all about vision. And in the numerology, it breaks down to eight, which is about messages, communication coming in, 
So confirming that value of as we pursue our passions, as we pursue our ultimate vision, we will be honored for that each step of the way. And as the week progresses, we're getting more support towards that. Emotionally, it's a little dicey. Um, again, Neptune and Pisces can be a very emotional energy. Saturn is in Pisces right now. So we really have to work around um, seeing <laughs> the difference between the illusions, seeing the difference between what is lies and what is truth, essentially. And not letting it mess with our head too much. The moon is in Scorpio midweek. So um, that, again, it's a lot of water energy. What I do like is we have the grounding force of the Earth element. Because we have a lot of planetary placements in Taurus this week, It's that Earth energy is going to help ground us and keep us stable. We don't want to get too, too much in those upper chakras the subtler layers. We don't want to get too sucked into, we get. We need to stay grounded and stable, right? We need to stay planted in the earth, <laughs> being present and aware of what is panning out in our daily living um, in order to really make those choices in a heart honoring way. So you feel there's something, okay, five of swords energy. You're feel, I'm hearing boundaries. Boundaries, 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 heavy boundaries. Five of Swords can be a really intense energy, but I feel like there is something or someone, yeah, Two of Cups. So there's a relationship that you need to have better boundaries around. Um, I do feel like someone wants something with you. There is an offer coming in midweek. I'm not sure if you want to take it, or maybe that's where you're putting up these boundaries. Maybe you do have to kind of lay down the law with someone, if especially if it's not in alignment with what this vision is for you, where you're headed. Again, confirming that Black Moon Lilith aspect of not getting too sucked into um, the past, right? Things that have been holding you down, weighing you down, etc. And midweek, Black Moon Lilith is actually in opposition to Neptune. So again, it kind of goes back to that idea that sometimes it can seem one way when in fact, or she's going to present it in one way when in fact it is something else. But again, there's so much going on for us in the astrology that helps us, that's going to allow us to move through even some of those harder conversations bringing closure to something, someone um, that needed to do so. You know, it's time to move forward. I feel like the places where there are a lot of restriction, spirit wants you to pay attention to that, to not be like, don't force the issue, right? If something's not working, if you've been, you know, uh, focusing on it a lot and it's just not happening, it's just not moving forward, Take a second look at it, right? Really look at, um, you know, how how it feels for you. Is it truly what you want? Does it make sense in your life? And we often see people, places, and things in a new way when we kind of take a beat, <laughs> surrender a little bit more, and and answer those questions, those harder questions, the questions that we do have to ask ourselves when things are not comfortable. Is it not comfortable because we're being resistant because, you know, you want it to look a certain way and it's not happening? Or is the resistance coming because it just doesn't work, right? Because it doesn't, um, it's not meant for you. We also just moved into Gemini season. So there's going to be a lot of duality that is popping up. Um, you know, it's especially I'm hearing, especially as it comes with these relationships, with these relationships of the past, seeing people in a different light, seeing the other side of them <laughs> is what I'm hearing. And I feel like that's where, again, these boundaries, knowing yourself, knowing what works for you and what doesn't is incredibly important this week. Um, 
I want to say staying grounded. I know I've said that a lot, but that's really what the name of the game is. And the challenge is going to be not letting our emotions overwhelm us or again, that Piscean energy that can make things seem really foggy, really cloudy. We're not getting a lot of clarity around things. Or we thought someone was a certain way and now they're not. <laughs> you know, we're seeing that other, oops, that other aspect of duality. So this energy is talking a lot about how we need to think through these things, right? I mean, and I feel like this really just confirms what I was talking about, that level of awareness that we need to have in our own life. At the end of the week, um, the emotions are playing a bigger role. And again, it tags back to that the discomfort, even though through and through in the astrology, we have a lot more supporting us this week, especially compared to last week. So if you had a rough week last week, know it's going to get better, which I like. But again, as I said in the very beginning, it doesn't take away certain challenges. And right now, our emotions are really being put into, um, you know, put under a microscope because yeah, because we're human beings, <laughs> because we get attached to people, places, and things. And um, it can be a really emotional experience, you know, especially if we're making changes in relationships with situations that we weren't expecting, that we didn't really plan on seeing it go that way. Spirit saying that there is a way to work together, work in harmony with your environment even if you do have to set up heavier boundaries with someone or something, think it through. It doesn't have to be a nasty conversation. It doesn't have to be one person flexing over the other. Um, there might be a little bit of that midweek, especially with this Five of Swords energy. So just be mindful of that. Be mindful of how you want to show up. Be mindful of, of how you want to represent yourself in these dynamics. Um, you know, and again, I, I feel like there's a lot of value in... Um, well, Mercury is in Taurus, so I like that. It's going to make our communication a lot more stable. Take time to think things through. Think before you speak is what I keep hearing um, with this Pallas energy. Ooh, nice. Yeah, because it is about, okay, when we make those changes, it, it's about, like I was saying, working in harmony with your environment. Um, sometimes we do have to set up heavy boundaries. Sometimes we do have to cut people out. Sometimes we don't want to be in relationship with someone, but they're still in our life, right? Like a coworker, or if you have children with an ex or, or you know, they're a family member, something along those lines where we're forced to still see them, forced to still interact with them. And I'm hearing that spirit really wants us to be mindful about how we approach these situations, really keeping our language above board, right? Not attacking, not going after someone. Yeah, because there is this need to pay attention to our home environment, our home, our family, where we get our support and our nurture and making sure that we keep it balanced and stable. Um, even if you are going through a messy breakup or situation where things are just it's making it really hard to work together. Recognizing that sometimes we do get very defensive when life gets stressful, when relationships are stressful, but how can we maintain a happy home, a happy environment amidst the challenge and struggle? Because changes are happening, right? With that death card, it's about death and rebirth. It's that Scorpio energy that I was talking about earlier with the moon, where we have to make changes around the things that, um, you know, just aren't serving us anymore. And I hear this is a lot about keeping our emotions in check, really tapping into that element of willpower and controlling how those changes happen, right? We all know that change is afoot. We're all experiencing it in different ways, different avenues. 
But at the same time, we can control the way we show up in those dynamics to make it more of an empowering experience for us. And I love that the astrology is really giving us... Um, uh, you know, a boost in that, like <laughs> that extra helping hand, that extra support. So it's not feeling so detrimental. And with that King of Cups energy, we're definitely seeing that emotion. I feel like dealing with someone or something who is pretty, um, yeah, emotional <laughs> about things you might be traveling, there might be traveling involved. Someone might exit a situation is also what I'm hearing. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not certain. There still are some things that need to play out. There still are some things that are, and I feel like a lot of this is going to be unfolding this week. It's about setting those boundaries, right? Like we talked about people in the past and not feeling, not trying to um, minimize the discomfort. It's not going to feel great. There are going to be parts of you that feel a little bit rejected or someone else feeling rejected and then getting super emotional about it, not knowing how to control their feelings. And um, I do feel like this person is very on the defensive with this nine of wands energy. They feel defeated. They feel overwhelmed. And I do feel like you're going to get some of that backlash. So 33, the key breaks down to six. So I feel like you're finally getting a piece of the puzzle that hasn't really been revealed yet. It's going to help bring a lot more understanding and clarity to a situation. It's giving you the information that you need to move forward, to bring closure to people, places, and things where you need to. I feel like there is a lot of abundance coming through. We talked a little bit about Jupiter today. Jupiter is in Gemini, so it's great. It moves to that component of duality I was talking about earlier. If we've been struggling a lot in our abundance, in our wealth, um, and just feeling good and happy in our life, that's going to start changing. And I feel like in this way that you've waited a long time, for this information or needing uh, clarity around something. And I do feel like this clarity is coming in. Even though the clouds represent that level of like fogginess or uncertainty, this feels like this was more from the past. We're getting two sixes. So this is a lot about bringing balance to a situation that has been out of balance for quite some time. Um, and I feel like it's, as this balance happens, that's where you start seeing this fortune, this wish fulfillment coming in for you. You might not be expecting it because with Pluto in retrograde, especially it moved into Aquarius last year and has been going back and forth in between Aquarius and um Capricorn. So um we've we've really <laughs> there's been a huge focus point on um, rebalancing, grounding out the things that haven't really been honoring our heart, our mind, our soul, where we're finding this loyalty and that support. And spirit really wants us to pay attention to these things so that, again, we're moving towards our abundance, not away from it. We're actually making choices that make sense to who we are, to what we want, and how we want our life to look. Again, these things aren't always easy, right? Like they come with challenges. They come with people who are emotional or messy situations that trigger us or places that we're feeling uncomfortable, rejected, left out, etc. But this is a lot about overcoming, right? It's about what this ultimate vision is for you and not being afraid to go after it. And yeah, sometimes that means we need to change and readjust some of our dynamics, um, some of our relationships. But if it is something that really honors your heart, your mind, your soul, that's what Spirit's asking you to really stick with it, to grow, to expand. We have that full moon in Sagittarius, Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter, and it really kind of drives home that, that concept of evolving and growing beyond and feeling empowered. Um, 
And I feel like there's a lot of supportive energy around that for us this week. It is, again, our self-empowerment, right? Not to be redundant, but just to drive home that fact that we're doing a lot of healing, a lot of growth, a lot of evolution around what it means to empower ourselves, to claim what we want, who we are, and live a fabulous life. <laughs> so with that being said, thank you for your time and energy always, especially if you made it this far in the video. I really appreciate it. Uh, drop comments below. Let me know how this fits for you. I love to support as well. And um, yeah, thank you for tuning in always. Stay tuned for the Zodiac readings. I'll upload that full moon video this week and I will talk to you soon. Have a fabulous week. Lots of love. Blessings always.